So welcome everyone. Uh, we're gonna directly start with the presentation. Um, let me, now you have to give me access to share. Yeah, they, they have provided us this uh, business of a sort, Zoom. Uh, not sure how it is better from the other ones. If it was not really different, we're gonna switch to our own personal Zooms. But can you check if you can do it now? Now it should be possible, yes. And uh, yes, we are recording. Yeah. Really. Yes. So I assume everyone has my screen. Now, and uh, I'm gonna go to the presentation mode. Yeah, everything good? Yeah, so welcome everyone. Uh, uh, we are uh, starting the high sci workshop, Hybrid Intelligence Sci Matters at Digital Futures. Uh, we are from Tudor, ETH, HKS Anhalt, Hyperbody, DR, material, material Ability, DARS, and SETA. So this lecture will have five sections. Uh, one would be the introduction to the tutors and participants. So when it's come to the participants introduction, we just ask you to raise hand or say hello. Um, and then we're gonna have a, an overview or a, an introduction to the background. We're gonna elaborate a bit more about the brief and the design challenge that we are sort of addressing. And then we're gonna discuss, the, discuss the, the four hybridity methods that we have developed and you're gonna learn in the first part of the workshop. And then uh, we're gonna discuss the schedule objectives and the tasks to be followed. So I'm Sina, I'm from TU Delft, uh, also from the Abba House, uh, the Hyperbody Research Group in TU Delft, and uh, we are also conducting studios and courses under the title of DARS uh, at the Abba House. Uh, I'm also an architect uh, uh, in the set of architecture studio together with uh, Adib. Uh, um, and uh, yeah, during the past years, I've been mainly working on robotic fabrication, the notion of uh, design materialization, data-driven design, and so on and so forth. So maybe I leave the floor to Benny. Hey, I'm, uh, I'm Benjamin, and I've recently started my PhD at ETH in a combination with uh, the uh, University in Anhalt and the Materiability Research Group, uh, which is founded by Manuel Kretzer. And so I'm really looking now into how to print and multi-mode, multi-material print, uh, bio-based materials, bioplastic, fungi, stuff like that. So um, robotically distributed. And before that, I've worked with uh, Sina and Adib, um, also at TU Delft, studied there for my master's. And uh, right now I'm in Cologne, but I will join Adib in Deso uh, this Sunday. So maybe Adib, you can uh, you can uh, continue. Yeah, sure. So I'm Adib. <clears throat> uh, I'm now in Deso, and I just graduated like three months ago from DIA. I've been working in computational design and robotic fabrication for a couple of years now, and last year my main focus was on the geometrical aspect of hybridity and how we can integrate discrete geometry and continuous geometry together and I based my thesis on that. And I'm a tutor in uh, DARS lab now, and um, I'm also associate architect in setup. And I'm gonna uh, be with you with Benny from Sunday, from Monday, uh, from Deso. So, yeah. Perfect. Um, in addition to the, to the tutor teams that you know, it's, uh, uh, great uh, honor and I would say a chance also to work with uh, Arisa Wan, uh, uh, who is also a former student uh, in DIA and also worked in Tudelf. And uh, she's gonna be an artist. Maybe 
uh, artist in, in this workshop. Maybe uh, we give also the floor to her to introduce herself. Hi, everyone. Uh, right now, I'm working in Germany as a commercial architect. In the same time, I also working with Theo Dell recently uh, on building on Mars. And it's also a collaboration with European Space Agency. We got into the second round. And yeah, we are de developing something about material and uh, extreme environmental architecture. In the same time, I'm also a member of SEEDS. SEEDS is space ecology design, design for in, uh, outer space environments too, with Dr. Angelo Wormulen. He's one of the leading um, collaborator with NASA, former NASA co collaborator. So I'm working with him. Uh, and also I am a manga artist. I like to sketch a lot uh, with some futuristic ideas. Yeah, I'm looking forward for your beautiful ideas. <laughs> yeah, great. So, yeah, we're gonna discuss maybe further how um, this collaboration can uh, happen and be really fruitful and constructive. Um, but before we start uh, our lecture, maybe we ask you with this order just to raise hand, say hi, I mean, whoever is here, uh, we would like to know your faces and uh, gradually, I think during the workshop, we would know more about you. Um, so the, the left list is the participants and the right list is the auditing participants, but uh, maybe we go one by one just to say hello and know you. So we start with Igor. Yeah, hello everyone. Yeah, and just tell where you are maybe. I'm in Russia right now, in Kazan city. Nice. Lorenzo. Hi, everyone. Uh, I am in Barcelona. Beautiful. Salam. I think we are missing her. Zilin. Hello. If, if I also uh, misspell your name, just, just introduce yourself. Uh, hello, can you hear me? Yes. Yeah, I'm Zilin from China. Okay. Uh, Vahid. Uh, hey, everyone. Uh, I'm Vahid. I'm a graduate student in Italy. But right now, because of the virus situation, I'm in Iran. Okay. Uh, Zhen Xiang, I think. Uh, Hi, my name is Zhen Xiang, and mm -hmm. I'm from China, but I am now studying in universe, uh, in USA. I'm in Cornell University, a graduate student. Yeah, thank nice. you. And uh, Muhammad Khalid. Hello, everyone. Uh, I'm from Cairo, Egypt. Nice. Uh, Diego. Hi, I'm Diego. I'm from uh, Turin, and uh, I'm a grad student in uh, Polytechnic. <laughs> Beautiful. Bahar? Hi, I'm um, Bahar and I'm from Iran. Nice. Uh, Matteo Tanti? Okay, he's not here. Okay. Oh, yes, no. Mehnoush? Um, hi, I'm Mehnoush. I'm from Iran. Okay. Could you, could you hear me, Sina? Yeah, yeah. Go on, Matthew. Oh, perfect, perfect. Thank you. We don't see you, but we we hear you. No. Ah, let me see. Let me see how to. I cannot really. I cannot really open up the stream. But anyways, nice to meet you guys. I'm looking forward for this. Thank okay, you. Cool. Uh, Jamal. Hi, I'm Jamal from Texas. Um, currently, but I'm going to be starting university at Carnegie Mellon soon. Nice. Yuki. Hi everybody, I'm Yuki Minami from Japan. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, Yuki. Uh, Jorge? Hello, I'm Jorge. I'm Julian, Jorge. but I'm here in London. London. Nice to meet you. Okay. Uh, next one, Edern, I think. No? Tatiana? 
Hello, I'm Tatiana. I'm from Rio de Janeiro, Brazil, and I'm in Rio now. <laughs> nice. Okay, uh, maybe we go also quickly to the auditing just to, to know the faces. Puria. Your voice is off. You hear me now? Yeah. Hi there, I'm Puria from Iraq. Okay. Ali? Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Ali? I think we lost your voice. Uh, Mahsan? Uh, hi, my name is Mahsan and uh, I'm currently in Helsinki, Finland. Nice. Uh, Ibrahim? Hello everyone, I am uh, Ibrahim, uh, I'm Egyptian, uh, I'm currently in this house doing my master in there. Okay. Uh, Chen? Hi guys. Uh, can you hear me? We... Maybe. I'm Ali from Iran University of Iran. We... We, we heard you, but your voice was like really futuristic, like a, almost like a cyborg. Thanks, Ali. Uh, and then uh, Chen. Hi, everyone. I'm UC and I'm from China. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Abdullah Sayed. Not here. Um, Ahmad, also not here. Asif, not here. Uh, Najmush, I think. Hello everyone, I am Najmush Hakeem. I am from Bangladesh. Nice. Uh, Hassan. No Hassan. Maximilian. Hi, my name is Maximilian Wacker and I'm from Innsbruck, uh, Austria. Nice. Fahim? We don't have Fahim Payman. Okay. I think I saw Payman, but anyway, Dorsa. Also not here. Um, Sudan. Hi, I'm Sudan from India. Nice to meet you, Sudan. And Sudipto. Also not here. Uh, Kamrul. Okay. Sanaz. Hello everyone, I'm Sana from Iran. Okay, nice to meet you. And uh, the last person, I think, here. Okay, so I think, uh, yeah, I, I would say like 80% of the people are here. I hope this uh, would be enough for a first introduction. Uh, we're gonna, um, I'm gonna mention something that we're gonna try to uh, manage the, the studio in such a way that there will be some sort of parallel works uh, where both uh, participant and auditing students will, uh, can join, uh, but there will be also like some sort of core uh, main body of the work that the, the main participants need to deal with. That's why there will be some sort of parallel channels of communication, but we're gonna get to that. So. I think after this introduction, um, we can uh, start a, a kind of an overview or a background of uh, what we have done and what we are aiming for. Uh, yeah, uh, as we said, uh, our main area of interest uh, is, uh, at least my area of interest together with uh, Adib and uh, Benjamin is uh, on robotic uh, fabrication, for instance, robotic 3D printing of 
policy structures, but also this uh, systemic thinking in design and how we can bridge the gaps between different disciplines, for instance, structural design, structural optimization and materialization and architectural design through this idea of systemic thinking, feedback, feedback loops, and basically constructing ontologies. Uh, at the same time, I think um, new methods of fabrication and construction also uh, provide new opportunities for new aesthetic. Um, uh, for instance, in this case, combining two methods of fabrication, in this case, hot wire cutting and milling resulted into this transition from uh, curved, curved surfaces to developable surfaces in this uh, uh, music table that you see here or um, looking into the performative aspects of uh, robotic fabrication and how we can uh, basically um, uh, augment or extend the performance uh, of a certain material, for instance, in this case, alum aluminum uh, sheets by, by forming it uh, 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 using a certain, let's say, pattern, which is informed according to certain structural uh, and material constraints and criteria, uh, and then looking into basically mass uh, customization, uh, looking into the components of architectural design and production as uh, unique, uh, um, let's say, individuals or unique uh, components, and then uh, develop uh, computational design to robotic production routines for such um, uh, materialization strategies, but also looking into assembly or like, uh, working with uh, recyclable materials or cheap materials and then using, let's say, fabrication intelligence and material intelligence to, in order to uh, extend their uh, performance. Uh, again, this, this, this is another case that we did also in BAUS, which was about like reciprocal structures and using this multi-directionality of uh, tooling that we can get uh, through uh, robotic fabrication. We're also looking into the way we can um, customize our own material. Uh, this is a project that we did in collaboration with um, um, the South Department of Design, uh, where we were bringing architects and designers together. I assume the future direction that uh, Benny uh, would take in his PhD would push this research to the next level. Um, so this, this project was customizing the material uh, and then use 3D printing uh, um, as a technique. For instance, this is a project that Adiv was also working on uh, uh, or another project where we were using bioplastic and then cutting it with robots in order to introduce certain, uh, let's say, porous pattern or looking into the way we can actually customize uh, the material, uh, bio-based material and add, add some sort of self illuminative uh, material or ingredients to, to have this, um, um, let's say, um, performance or, or feature. Uh, or also looking into uh, the routines that we call them basically data-driven design. And these routines, I would say, can be tested in small scale projects or artistic projects all the way to the larger scale architectural design projects. For instance, in this case, we were looking into this idea of uh, data-driven art and tracking the data that we can, for instance, capture from a face or from the movement of people in a, in a space. In this case, it's about facial recognition and translating that facial recognition into some uh, sort of piece, uh, some, some, some sort of uh, art piece. Or also looking into the way we can collaborate with other industries. And again, it's another collaborative project between architects and designers, uh, uh, which is sponsored by Audi. Um, um, again, in this, in this project, uh, me and uh, they were the tutors together with uh, the, uh, the South Department of Architecture with Manuel Kretzer. So we were again bringing different disciplines together on one hand to bridge the gap between the disciplines, but on the other hand also looking into different uh, ways of materialization, but also embedding, for instance, smart uh, glasses, smart lighting, uh, or uh, integrating natural materials, so on and so forth. So this, this interdisciplinary approach is also um, uh, one thing that we want to basically uh, push. Um, as also mentioned, uh, uh, we're also practicing architect. Uh, this is uh, one of the recent projects that we've finished. It's uh, a, a project in stone, again, using uh, parametric design to, in order to, to create basically complex surfaces, but using this idea of voxelization and recursive tessellation. 
uh, and also uh, use it as a way to integrate the whole um, uh, uh, landscape to the to the facade all the way to the to the rooftop or looking into the way we can read the data for instance from a natural stone and translate it into a way for tooling and then how this can become a design driver for us and also maybe um, um, uh, we can also trace this idea of hybridity in, in uh, graduation projects of uh, Adib and, and uh, Benny. Maybe I can give the floor to Adib. Yeah, basically in this project I was looking at uh, how I can integrate discrete materials and continuous materials together in one project and how we can see the symbiosis between them. And so, yeah, oh, I don't have the access to the presentation. So yeah, while it's playing, I can. So basically I was using uh, velocity vector fields in order to simulate the particle system for simulating the discrete part and how it can pen penetrate inside a uh, continuous surface and merge this project that was the, the function was uh, Hyperloop Station for Berlin. So, yeah, I think more or less. Yeah. That, yeah. Maybe, maybe I can just flip it if you have, oops. Yeah, maybe uh, we, we come back to this uh, and yeah. then now I give the floor to, to Benny to explain. Yeah, he, he also some uh, like a, like a um, capture of my um, master thesis project so it was about the repurpose of oil platforms and one big focus it's it's like an indoor uh, space you saw and one focus was how to how to merge different functions different geometries together to create um, create a fluid um, geometry also embedded with functions a so very still very theoretical um, but was interesting to to uh, develop different techniques and actually from this from this work uh, a lot of research um, popped up and um, so I think uh, also the videos are kind of lucky so I think we we can cycle back to, to that later on in the yeah week. maybe I just I think uh, yeah. this part is cool yeah okay so basically, yeah, the idea of printing also, which uh, we explain later, and hybridity, so on and so forth. So we, we try to avoid too many videos because we know that like it's really hard to to integrate. But maybe you conclude also about uh, what you do in in digital production. Yeah, sure. Um, so as I said in the beginning, I'm here in Cologne, so it's it's. Uh... So it's a carpentry officially, but they have like two CNC uh, machines, five axes, huge robot. So uh, there I'm working and collaborating uh, with this company and they do a lot of the digital form work and stuff like that. So um, that's that's where I work part time and um, also yep. the last projects. Yeah. Good. And uh, as we also mentioned, uh, Arise is also like a an artist next to being an architect. Maybe you can explain a bit about the ideas behind this, ESA. Okay, uh, this project is a collaboration with ESA and also under the supervision of Angelo Vermeulen. And this idea of Starship, uh, we developed this idea of Starship for interstellar mission uh, in the near future. So ESA is interested in this uh, kind of research, so I have to develop some ideas for the interior for future astronauts to live on. So as you see in the sketch, uh, I sketched something about farming uh, in the starship, inside the starship, like how future astronauts can grow their own food and also provide an idea of spaces in anti-gravity. And in the right side, it's a visualization with rhinoceros, uh, rhino six, and with the merge of my sketches. So this is like a style that I developed uh, for ESA. And uh, how do you visualize an interior space and how future starship can work uh, with 
ESA's um, Melissa system, which is the life support system for astronauts. In the lower right, it's uh, how do we grow trees? Like I also provide an idea and sketch about how in the future we can provide uh, natural trees which can generate natural oxygen to the astronauts for long-term mission. Yeah, so this is my work. Yeah. Very nice. Um, so yeah, maybe maybe to conclude about the first part, uh, this, this materialization model is also very much important for us. How we can bridge the gap between different disciplines of computational automation and materialization. And um, many in when it comes to materialization, think about porosity, hybridity, and assembly. Of course, this workshop focuses on hybridity, which, gonna, which we are gonna uh, explain a bit more in some of other other projects that we were doing. Um, so you see uh, examples of hybrid systems in, in a, let's say, a state of the art or other uh, projects. Um, in, this, in this workshop, we aim to basically um, categorize the possibilities of working with hybrid systems using a certain techniques, which is dual extru extrusion for this workshop, and then see how we can, first of all, compute and model, and second, produce, and then how we can design with these systems. So um, again, just to, 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 to look into some of the previous projects with, with, which deals with hybridity, uh, we have this uh, three project, hybrid cork, hybrid concrete, and hybrid silicon. I try to be fast. Uh, uh, again, I have avoided the, the videos in order to be basically fast. So in, in this case, for instance, we are removing the material from multiple sites, and this, this, this re material removal texture uh, uh, results into a certain flexibility. Again, this project was uh, done uh, also with Benjamin and other of students, uh, or in this case, we are looking into the way we can combine um, structural capacity, capacities of a uh, material like concrete together with, with, uh, uh, with uh, foam. Uh, uh, in this case, uh, the two materials are sort of combined in this prototype. Or in another case, we are, we are combining two techniques of production, subtractive and additive together. Um, um, uh, so the idea is to, to print uh, soft silicon on top of hard uh, foam. Uh, uh, again, as a part of uh, the project uh, by uh, Benjamin and also multiple workshops and projects, uh, Benjamin developed this, this uh, uh, end effector together with us uh, where uh, we are extruding uh, two materials or two silicon uh, potentially. Uh, and then uh, we were running uh, basically several tests and several tri trials to understand the material capacity and then work with this capacity. And then addressing uh, details in really micro scale, which probably this is one of the things that we want to sort of focus in this workshop. And then the, 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 this met method was sort of tested in this um, project, uh, which is hybrid chair. So the idea was to, again, combine multiple techniques of uh, production and multiple techniques of fabrication, in this case, hot wire cutting, combined with uh, rough milling, high resolution milling, basically use the, use the techniques where uh, and how it is needed. Um, for instance, in this case, milling is only happening on a concave surface, uh, while the other surfaces are rapid, rapidly removed with hot wire cutting. Uh, and then uh, this process is followed with some sort of uh, high resolution milling and this again followed by um, printing in, 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 in high resolution and then yeah also basically testing it. Uh, so with this introduction to the to the background project uh, oops. Again, a uh, design system is always behind these ideas. We expect to sort of develop these, these sort of design systems for the project that we are going to do, but maybe in a, in a more speculative uh, extent. Uh, and then uh, working with uh, tool pass generation and also details and basically also, of course, publishing the results in, in uh, peer-reviewed publications. With this background, uh, we, we, we sort of uh, jump into the the brief and the design challenge. 
Um, so um, I assume that uh, most of you have read uh, the read the brief, but here just to basically um, uh, echo it once more uh, together, uh, we would go through the um, the main basically ingredients of the, the brief. So the hybrid intelligence soil matters uh, explore the notion of multimateriality in computational design and digital fabrication with the goal to design and prototype hybrid informed material systems. In high sci, high refers to material intelligence through hybridity and sci refers to the occupant of space as cyborgs in cyber physical spaces. So I think the first part of the, the, the title is going to be uh, straightforward using certain computational design techniques. The second part is basically a part which is more speculative and I assume that also together with uh, Arisa we can sort of push the, push the project to a, to a good direction when it comes to this uh, speculative aspect aspects and then design with these ideas. Um, uh, so therefore, uh, I mean, I'm gonna also explain in the schedule, but maybe it's not bad to mention it here that we, we first start with tutorials, some individual works, and then we group, uh, we shape groups to, to basically uh, develop and uh, finalize more mature projects. Um, again, just to wrap up the whole uh, idea or reintroduce the ingredients of the, the workshops, uh, we, we refer to, in high sci, we refer to sci org and sci locus. So the body is not only the, 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 the thing that we want to design might not end up being only the variable, but also to a certain extent the space around the, the future uh, occupant of the space. So this symbiosis between the human embedded, uh, hu human embedded in the space is, is important. So, um, just some some ideas and some slides here to to trigger some some um, basically challenges or, or ideas uh, in this introduction. So this idea of identity, the new identity that we can sort of create using um, um, tech, basically um, uh, variables. I think it's something that we would like to explore. But at the same time, this new materiality. But also uh, not 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 only a, um, um, as a mean to basically uh, get uh, specific performances, for instance, combination of hard and soft, but also looking into the uh, notion of hybridity from um, um, functional, from aesthetic, from structural point of view. I think this is uh, these are the things that we would like to sort of explore and, and speculate about um, the second part of the workshop, but. Uh, we are providing some examples here just to, just to trigger some ideas, especially until Sunday. Um, until Monday, uh, we would ask you to think about these, these ideas and there will be some also some task descript descript uh, description until Sunday. Um, and looking into the, to the work of other researchers uh, where this notion of hybrid materiality is uh, sort of uh, explored and uh, materialized in, in variable design or mass designs, but uh, uh, looking into the different ways of computing hybridity, I think this would be a part that we start on Monday uh, using um, uh, modeling, computational modeling uh, techniques in Houdini and Grasshopper and looking into the way basically these complex fractal systems can, can result into hybrid hybrid uh, hybrid systems. Um, this is the work of Descriptive, which is also working with uh, uh, Mediated Matter Group or other other uh, techniques of introducing hybridity. Um, in, this, in, the, in the fourth part of the lecture, you're gonna see that how we sort of formalize um, uh, the, these, these new, uh, these um, possible ways of working with hybridity. Of course, uh, when it comes to hybrid system, one way of looking into hybridity is using basically um, multicolored multi-materiality where we have like uh, a true gradient from one color to another color. I think as a, as a, as a computational design or fabrication, uh, 3D printing te technique, this is an interesting, uh, let's say, um, approach. But uh, for this particular workshop, we want to focus on two materials for uh, different reasons that we are going to discuss. But I think um, at the same time, if we could, uh, we think uh, at the same time, if we could 
understand this hybridity with two materials, I think uh, uh, the, these transitions from uh, one material to other materials in a kind of a continuous way can also be the next step. Um, so speculating about the future uh, and also learning from, from uh, fashion, uh, learning from uh, designers like Iris van Herpen from the uh, Netherlands or uh, uh, the work of Julia Corner uh, in Austria and uh, Los Angeles. I think uh, we're going to look into these examples and, and, and in addition to the recorded video, we're going to share these this, this slides with you so you can basically have a better idea of uh, what we are looking for. Um, and also to, the to a certain extent, we want to not only focus on the body, but maybe extend this, this, this idea of wearable to the space. Maybe one good example is this example by Y Factory, uh, Tudel, uh, uh, conducted by Winnie Mass and Adrian uh, in, uh, in uh, Faculty of Architecture, where they are referring to this, this cartoon, if you know, uh, Papa, Papa, where, where the, 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 the animals or these creatures can uh, reconfigure or reshape their, uh, their body uh, according to different functions or different needs. So this might result into a new definition pr for privacy or public. And I think uh, when it comes to these speculative as aspects, um, the research, uh, the, the approach and the sketches of Arisa can can help us, especially after we shape the groups together, uh, because um, on one hand, we want to master certain computational design techniques, which comes with a lot of debugging, back and forth, so on and so forth. Uh, but at the same time, we did, in this short time, we want to be able to speculate about the way we can design with these material systems. So in the groups, I think uh, Arisa can join you to, to uh, somehow get your ideas and then uh, sort of uh, sketch it uh, probably in, towards the middle of the workshop and these sketches might help. These are the sketches that, that she has done uh, previous to the workshops according to what we discussed. So just, just to develop um, the idea, but I think um, together when we, if we put our minds together, I think this would uh, uh, result into different uh, and interesting directions. So get to the core of what we are going to start uh, learning. Uh, I'm going to uh, go to the fourth part of the uh, lecture, which is uh, hybridity methods. So um, to, to prepare some, some sort of uh, methods and workflows for the workshops, we have um, um, created, uh, basically we have, we have developed systems for uh, materialization and 3D printing of multi-material systems. So these four methods that you see here, uh, which are printed, are the methods that we are going to discuss in this, uh, in this uh, introduction. And then in the first uh, day, you're gonna learn how you can create these, these material systems and also consider production ability and fabrication ability of these systems at the same time. So, uh, in order to uh, to basically basically in order to to basically um, have a um, a direction um, in in uh, research into hybridity, we have categorized uh, the 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 idea of multimateriality or dual materiality or hybridity into four categories, and I think these would be the categories that we are going to refer during this workshop in order to be able to basically um, um, uh, push these methods that we have developed and at the same time come up with new methods and some ideas which are related to, to performance, which I'm going to explain later. So the way we sort of categorize the hybridity uh, um, uh, into four categories is, uh, as you see in this slide, we, we can think of gradients of A to B we can think of penetration, penetration of A in B. We can, dis, we can think of distribution of A on B, and we can think of intertwine of A and B. Um, I mean, if you are familiar, uh, if you're familiar with also coding and some sort of Boolean logic, uh, I think at the same time, the, these, these sort of logics here, theoretically speaking and conceptually speaking, can also be translated into some sort of computational 
modeling uh, techniques and ideas and means. So that's why we want to basically focus on these four aspects. But these are the topological, uh, let's say, approaches that we have. And when it comes to geometry, uh, considering all those four types, we can think of voxels, we can think of fields, we can think of surfaces, and we can think of volumes. Um, so going back to, to, to these four types, um, we're gonna explain a bit more uh, what do we mean by these four types. Again, from Monday on, um, um, uh, we start uh, with tutorial sessions that explain exactly uh, the way these, these, these uh, material systems have been modeled and uh, basically generated. And then after learning, we ask you to basically play with them and tweak, with the, uh, tweak, tweak the algorithm a bit to, to understand their behavior. So in this case, we have a, um, uh, a gradient of A to B where the two materials sort of invade each other. In this case, we are using uh, swarm intelligence to, to, to model this. Some of these examples are done in Houdini and some are done in uh, Grasshopper. And then we're gonna have tutorials on both, uh, uh, let's say, techniques. Um, um, and then another uh, idea, another uh, possible ways of uh, thinking A inside B. Uh, this is a, an example, for instance, a soft material can grow on, on top of a bone-like material uh, where, where the two material can, can combine their properties and behavior and their performance. Or in another case, um, uh, using um, uh, this uh, growth uh, uh, algorithm, we are growing uh, a material on, on a surface, on, on, a, on a basically a lattice, uh, where the two create, uh, again, another hybrid uh, system. Or um, uh, an example of A and B are, uh, is this example where the two materials are sort of intertwined. I mean, you can argue that there is no background or foreground, or if there is a background or foreground, the two are sort of intertwined two-dimensionally. So these are the things, these are the methods that you're gonna learn, for instance, uh, one of the methods that you're gonna learn in, in Houdini. So as I said, uh, we're gonna have sessions on, starting from Monday on Houdini and Grasshopper to also somehow bridge the, um, the gap between these two software to a certain extent. Um, yeah, and then based on these, 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 uh, these printable uh, examples, the idea is to, to also develop other, other examples where, for instance, a combination of hard and soft can coexist together. And last but not least, I think when it comes to the way we want to speculate and bridge the gap between this uh, let's say uh, systematic research on material and the design. I think it is it is important about it is important to think about the performance of these these hybrid systems. And when it comes to performance, this is one of the tasks that we would like you to uh, think of. And then, I mean, uh, especially the participants are gonna receive an, an email uh, to to think about uh, these uh, performances that we can. Uh, get out of these hybrid systems. You may look into different uh, references. You may you may look into um, references in nature or uh, other other um, uh, disciplines to see how this combination of two materials can result into a, a kind of a performative, um, uh, let's say, hybrid system. Is it a combination of hard and soft? Is it a combination of opaque and transparent? Is it about being smooth and rough? Uh, is it about being uh, dark and bright, so on and so forth. I think this is the thing that you can speculate and think about until the Monday. Uh, the last part of the presentation uh, would be about the schedule um, uh, and the, the objective and the task. Uh, again, um, we're not gonna go to the details of the task uh, at this moment, uh, and uh, we're gonna open the, the floor and discussion to, to you also to, to, to uh, basically, uh, if there is a question or there is an idea, maybe you can think about it and then uh, share it with us. So uh, the, the last part is about the schedule. I know that some of you uh, said that maybe the starting uh, time of the workshop is a bit hard, especially 
are participating from the US um, and uh, or in, in general uh, the North or South America I think it's I know it's hard uh, but I think there was a kind of a mistake also in the in the dis workshop description we were thinking of 12 uh, uh, set or Central European time as a starting uh, time of the workshop, but I hope this, this would work because uh, for everyone, um, those who may f sort of miss the first part of the sessions because of the time difference, we try to have all the sessions recorded and then you can recap, but probably it's better, especially for the first two days to, to be active because we have tutorial sessions. Uh, anyway, so if I want to go to through the through the schedule, uh, this was today. Basically, we would have some sort of uh, also uh, open discussion after this lecture or questions if you have. And then Monday uh, we start uh, sharp with um, uh, tutorials uh, with a, maybe a bit of introduction on, on how we want to connect. Is this material system to the design ideas that we have. Um, so you don't need to install anything until uh, then. We're gonna share some links with you. Uh, we try to basically consider the, the talks that are going on in digital future. That's why the breaks are uh, considered in such a way that we could also attend some of the talks or you can attend some of the talks if you want. And then uh, towards the afternoon on Monday, uh, we would start with some design sessions we, where we brainstorm, which we, where we already shape our groups. Uh, the way we are gonna share, uh, shape our groups is also uh, based on uh, the ideas that you uh, basically bring uh, Monday morning or Sunday evening. This is something that we have to discuss uh, um, based on this, this individual research that you do or we also consider your background and also timing to basically shape the group. So from Monday afternoon, in parallel to this individual tutorial based sessions, we would like to shape the groups uh, to bring the ideas together. Um, we hope to finish all the tutorials on Monday. I mean, uh, that's the goal. And uh, then um, from Tuesday on, it would be mostly debugging in terms of technical aspects, but the, the core design should happen on, on Tuesday, which is partially based on the methods that you learn, you, you're you going to learn, the four methods that you saw, uh, and a bit of um, basically alteration or extension of those methods, and um, uh, also the individual research that you would do. Uh, Wednesday uh, morning, is going to be definitely design uh, uh, driven. Uh, by design driven, we also we also um, uh, mean for sure debugging and like solving problems, technical problems. And uh, towards um, the afternoon, um, we should have at least a first. Oops, first uh, set of uh, prints to be sent to the printers. Uh, again, the types of the printers that we use, the, the way you need to prepare the files, I think these are the things that we are gonna learn during the workshop. Um, yeah, and uh, Thursday, again, I mean, in the, in, in the, originally in the, in the schedule, uh, we, ha we had this Thursday off, I mean, because we have to work basically on the design and then we, are, we need to spend uh, time to prepare the files for the print and then put them in print because it's, it's, it's basically, it costs time. And um, uh, maybe towards the uh, afternoon, but maybe since we are going to work in groups, already from uh, Wednesday, we can discuss the way we want to document our, our, our projects. Because one nice feature of digital feature, I don't know if you're aware, is that they, they have developed an online uh, exhibition platform where we can exhibit our basically posters and models and also the printed objects that we are going to have probably per, per group. 
So I think uh, this is something that we would like to really do correctly and nicely. And uh, for Friday, we will have final presentation with external critics to be to be announced. Um, yeah, uh, that's that's it basically uh, when it comes to the schedule. And uh, we we have provided some some uh, uh, reference files for bodies, uh, which we are going to also share with you. Uh, but I think. Um, uh, uh, we would also like to uh, sort of finish with this uh, sketch of Arisa, which sees the body as also a dynamic, basically, let's say, um, instance where you can extend uh, uh, your presence in the space. So therefore, um, until, until, until uh, I would say um, Sunday, uh, based on this lecture and based on this introduction, we would like you to study a bit more about these hybrid systems. Also learn from those four types. Maybe you can speculate about those four types of capability and uh, think about it. And then um, again, uh, as we uh, mentioned, uh, there's gonna be a, a text um, in a WhatsApp group that we're gonna share uh, the link with you later. If you don't mind, we prefer to, to keep the communication in WhatsApp, especially with the participants, students. Because uh, I think, yeah, I know that like uh, uh, email is more formal, but maybe WhatsApp is also an, a new normal of the 21st century. I think it would be faster and more efficient if you communicate there. So there you're gonna receive a text about the task. I mean, it's not a, like a hardcore coding or modeling task, but it's more like a kind of a design thinking task where you where we ask you to think about uh, these four types that we uh, mentioned, of course, with what you uh, have in mind in terms of state of the art or background project, and think about potential application of hybrid systems. I mean, we have mentioned four types here, but I think there are more when it comes to architecture, when it comes to variables, when it comes to the presence of a human body in a space where this hybrid material has become a medium between the human body and the space. So this 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 is basically um, the the invitation to the to a challenge, a design thinking challenge that we uh, ask you to to do. Yeah, that's that's about it for now. Um, um, uh, I think we are actually on time. Uh, we still have uh, like one hour to open up the discussion and uh, before. We open the floor to to, to the to the audience and uh, participants. Maybe uh, Benjamin and Adiv and Arisa can add some notes, and then and we open the floor to to questions and discussions. Yeah, Benny, Adiv, your voice, your voice, your voice. Yeah, no, I was just thinking what to say, you know. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, no, thank you, Sina. It was, good. It was a great lecture. Um, I think you mentioned everything. Um, it's, it's, yeah, this, these types are, I think, really important. Uh, well, uh, for us, when we when we develop these these basic techniques um, of how to model it and how to how to define these these uh, gradients or, or intersections and stuff like that. So I think, um, I mean, it's, we could use it as a red line. So that's, that's quite important, I think. Mm -hmm. And as well, I think you didn't mention uh, like the possibilities to print. Mm -hmm. um, so um, we have access to, to dual printers. So um, the idea is to print at least um, a part or fragment of your uh, of each group's design um, so that's that's a nice possibility so this one was printed with a race uh, 3d uh, dual extrusion printer and um, so uh, we need to keep that in mind and for the for the for the schedule um, as well that we we really drive towards getting the files done 
before uh, Thursday so we can print them because it costs a lot of time um, to, to get these ready. Adib, maybe you add also something. That's a good, yeah. really good point. Yeah, actually, I think everything uh, well said. Uh, I just wanted to also add, so don't they take these four prints that we showed you like as a direction. It's more of a sample that we wanted to also explore. So these are our explorations to our hybridity with these dual printers. And maybe you have another ideas and they're maybe more cool. So even in terms of uh, design approach, you can go towards another ones. So don't take this as the main direction of your thinking for this task that we're going to talk about. Or for the task, I think you're going to come up with more sketch likes uh, of presentation, maybe some, some sketches. It can be hand sketch or it can be even modeled. Or it can be a paragraph for so we can understand what's your idea and what you're thinking about hybridity and uh, I think that's it yeah I mean the, the the time is a bit short so we don't have that much of time to uh, work a lot on the and debug the prints and also the design so we have to be super fast I think this four or five days is gonna be a bit hard and Condense, I would say, but it's gonna be cool. It's gonna be cool. Normally, this this kind of workshop could take up to ten days, so we can have the tutorials, have the briefs, and then have the design sessions to you. But because of the, the time, it's gonna be more condensed. But it's gonna be cool at the end, I guess. Yeah, I think I think I think uh, what you mentioned about uh, not taking these four 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 methods literally. Uh, so, sorry, for samples, literally, I mean, the, the methods, as, 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 as Benny said, are kind of red lines. So we want to basically know what type of capability we are talking about because the, the categorization that we have provided also considers some sort of fabrication potentialities and constraints that we have, right? Um, but uh, if, if there is a better, better version of a gradient of A to B, uh, uh, which we can uh, computationally handle and model, uh, then we, we can we can develop it and or build on top of these samples. So um, this is uh, something that we would like to consider. And the re one of the reasons that we have provided also these samples is the fact that we wanted to basically make a make a shortcut. But if uh, because of the skills or the passion or like a cool idea that it may come to the table. It would worse to to deviate a bit, so to say. Uh, we would uh, definitely welcome that uh, deviation. Uh, yeah. And uh, yeah, uh, Arisa, maybe also, do you also mention something, but uh, I would also like to mention that Arisa probably won't be able to join during the workshop hours, most of the work, uh, all the workshop hours, but I think uh, when we look at the uh, schedule, I think at some really critical points, uh, when we especially discussed the ideas in the group, uh, we would have, uh, uh, we would benefit from basically her skills in sketching and things like that. Um, yeah, maybe you want to also add something before we open the floor. Uh, yeah, uh, I think uh, you you are free to message me whenever you need help. Yeah, I'm welcome to help. Uh, it's interesting um, sample you have uh, we have developed, and I think due to this short time, it's it's also uh, good to refer to what we have, and also uh, to develop something more functional. Right now, I think the fashion world, the example we see is more into patterns finding. It will be cool that we can implement more function, uh, more um, yeah, meaningful function. Like in, in this sketch, it's like a function between, merge between uh, hard and soft. So it's a space suit that I designed and uh, through the works of uh, inspiration from the samples. And uh, for example, like the head and heart 
is our most uh, crucial, significant part of the body. So perhaps, uh, for example, you can put more dense, hard material to um, protect the important parts of the body and less, like, more soft material to other parts of the body, for example. Uh, one, one, one thing that is kind of, I think, given and obvious is that, uh, like in the, in the in Monday when we when we start with this format uh, day, in Monday when we start with these four methods, uh, <clears throat> uh, like almost immediately, uh, we would uh, try out how we can basically generate such a material system on a more complex surface, uh, which covers a part of the body or or, or <clears throat> basically a cover a part of the body or extend to the space. So I think. Um, I would say, in terms of uh, learning, um, the, um, the technical learning curve, I would say, is uh, happening when, when, when we are uh, applying this, this uh, materialization technique in a more complex surfaces, which may come from your idea um, with regards to variables, with regards to the, the presence or symbiosis of human body in space, so on and so forth. So I think we're, we're going to have some sort of to master these uh, techniques and also master, of course, certain softwares or certain, certain methods in Houdini and Bresol. Okay. So, so you raise this hand. Yeah, maybe I stop sharing or I already stopped sharing. I don't know. No. And Sina, your voice is kind of fading again. Okay. I, I said I stopped sharing for now. Maybe we can we can uh, receive some ideas or questions or, or concerns, especially in terms of schedule, uh, and uh, see how we can basically proceed. Anyone? Matthew, do you want to say something? Yes, please, yes, please. Um, yeah, a kid, a kid from Benjamin. Uh, first of all, hello. It's fine. You can see my face. Um, I feel Benjamin uh, mentioning something with regards to two to, to different things. But, um, I'm assuming when it comes to exploration, we need to see, cause I'm assuming we'll be, we'll be to the printing files and in, in some kind of plastic. But I'm assuming when it comes to the exploration, we should kind of see the 3D printing more as a representation, like a 3D representation of our concept, right? Because I think there's so many other different materials to explore that might, I'm assuming it might live with us because actually I was thinking of maybe some kind of material which would kind of shape shift with different kind of electricity some which kind of would, would expand and something which, 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 which would retract so obviously that would kind of become more of a kinetic like more complex thing but I don't know I'm just just throwing throwing things there on the table to see if I should yeah. just kind of like some kind of plastics or kind of if we just see the user printing more of a represent like a geometric representation of how we intend to fuse these two materials together. Definitely, Benny, you wanna you wanna reflect on that? Uh, yeah, sure. Um, can be. I, I say. so um, we also have um, different materials. So it's not only PLA, of course, or ABS. So. But uh, I agree with you. So it's it's um, we need to be also creative. It's it's a representation, but it could be more if you also think of other techniques, how to combine materials. Maybe then it's more about the technique of interlocking or whatever. Because it might not be the focus of of uh, today's workshop, but still there are also options uh, where the material could be a different one, uh, but it works as a placeholder. So. It's, um, I think you said it right, so it's yeah. uh, good. So, so I think there, there, there were two, two, two aspects uh, um, uh, that you sort of address in your comment. I think one, one aspect is to create a narration or a story about our, our projects. Uh, I think that that story or narration actually should be speculative and should be futuristic, I think, for this workshop especially. But uh, futuristic and speculative does not mean that it's sort of immaterial, uh, and uh, it, it does it does not mean that we cannot materialize it. So basically, 
um, uh, we, we need to make a balance between what we want to uh, basically sell as a story and what, what, do we, what do we want to sell as a geometry or a presentation or eventually prototype. And uh, with regards to materials, um, again, uh, we, have, we have, of course, uh, different types of PLA. We have flexible um, uh, TPU, we have uh, transparent PLA, and uh, these are the main materials that we are going to prototype with. But uh, when you, for instance, uh, design, if you, if you think of one of the material A, which um, also conduct electricity, for instance, is, uh, is, is a conductive material, um, yeah, that, that can be, and then you, you provide a good reasoning that why you need that on a variable or why you need that on a uh, uh, basically um, an object between human and space. Why? Uh, so uh, one thing is about providing an, uh, a scenario about the why, and uh, another thing is to materialize it using computational design and production. I think uh, this idea of scenario and narration is really important and relevant. Okay. Who else has some, some, some burning questions or idea? Uh, just have a question about uh, Houdini because I never personally use it. So, uh, where, where you are you? Uh, we don't see you. Who are you? Uh, Lorenzo Mazzini. Lorenzo. You have to go to the second page, I guess. Yeah, I am trying. Yeah. But, well, let's be clear. Okay, Lorenzo, got there. it. Yeah. And I uh, would like to to ask uh, and to understand better how work the integration between, uh, how could work integration between uh, Houdini and Grasshopper. Uh, I imagine that Houdini work with uh, meshes. Adib, maybe you but can repeat are, so This is your question? No, like, it's, it's working with all kinds of geometry. So it, we're not gonna necessarily import something from Grasshopper to Houdini. In one case, actually, we did that. We can do it also, like in uh, with JSON files with the uh, Python packs. But we're not going to necessarily do that. We can introduce the geometry from the initial points and surfaces inside the Houdini, and then develop something on that. So basically, in Houdini, we can work with meshes. We can work with uh, NURBS also, as well as Rhino. So it doesn't matter. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think um, Adiban Benny knows uh, more Houdini than me for sure. But uh, I find it also fun. And I think the fact that in, in Houdini we can work with more complex meshes and we can compute heavier meshes, I think it's, it is actually a good investment and relevant to to work with when it comes to 3D printing. And uh, we want to also learn that with samples and examples rather than like going to a kind of a step-by-step -step tutorial because we, I mean, if you, I assume that most of you who have registered for this workshop, based on what you have mentioned in your portfolio, you've mentioned that you know Grasshopper. Uh, I think since you know Grasshopper, and if you also know a bit of scripting or have a general idea, I think uh, you're gonna be able to learn it in the first and the second days. And I think later, of course, you can extend your skills in this part. Okay. Julia is asking, uh, do we have future access to the recorded movie of this class? Yes. That's what, what we are gonna share with everyone. And uh, Bahid, you have a question? Uh, no, I, I, I'm just a little bit worried, Sina, about how 
intense this workshop is going to be. I, I mean, I was just, when I saw the schedule, I was thinking, how are they going to do this in five days, well, four, five, six hours a day? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's going to be, a, uh, it's gonna be a, at least five to six hours a day. But since we are going to uh, shape groups, we expect to, to be able to get like good results. Um, probably, I mean, uh, we were we were fine tuning the schedule. Uh, uh, also, uh, uh, last night uh, with uh, Benny and uh, Adib, and then we were we are sort of expecting of some sort of hard push, uh, probably on mm. on Wednesday. So. Uh, I think uh, this is something that if we want to get good results, we may need to be aware of. Especially, I mean, um, because we're gonna we're gonna work together a lot to prepare the files for the print, but also prepare the documentation because we're not gonna be able to. I mean, for instance, if you if you design a, a full variable which goes all the way from the, uh, the tip of your toes to to head I think uh, the design can be this large for sure but the print need to be smaller and then the preparation of the the the, the, um, the, the file for the print therefore it can be sort of managed but the design can be larger that's why that's how we're going to be able to to basically manage I mean it's impossible to to print a, a full variable even even if you have the full design ready uh, it's impossible to to print it even like in one week. That's why we want to focus on the design, and then uh, the print would be a a prototyping as a part of the design. Yeah, Diego. Yeah, sure. Hi, Sina. Hi, all. I'm uh, um, interesting uh, in your uh, workflow. When you when you do when you project uh, anything, uh, which is uh, the relationship uh, between uh, the handmade crafting, uh, the robotic uh, sketching, and uh, generative or parametric design? Um, how how do you manage uh, all these uh, these uh, these things uh, to do something like uh, your works? Uh, I think that's a very relevant question. Yeah. And, uh, and I think um, to a certain extent, even if the project is so, uh, like, let's say, a small scale or, or if it is a very large scale, the combination of uh, human intelligence versus machine intelligence, the combination of automated processes versus analog and, let's say, non automated crafty processes, I think. This combina these combinations or this hybridization also in, in, in conceptual uh, uh, thinking level, I think this hybridization is, is sort of there. And I would say in this, this, especially from, I would say, Tuesday on when we shape the groups, I would, I would uh, we, we, we think that also this, 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 this um, group experience that you, would uh, we would have in, in each of for each of these projects partially maybe answer answer your question because and and um, for instance the fact that we also ask our research to join us to, to help us with hand sketching and sketching and also basically artistic sketching is is somehow in line with what you are addressing as a concern or an idea. Um, with regards to uh, this part of the uh, this part of your question, that how do we manage? I think this this systemic thinking and then thinking about the correlation between different part of the process and then making establishing feedback loops between them and basically knowing uh, more about uh, the process itself, but also the correlation between input and output of each system. I think this is. This is something that, that in each project we may experience in different levels. But even if we do a small variables, I think this 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 is this this is this systemic thinking is scalable and generic to many extent. Yeah. 
Maybe you guys can also add something. Yeah. Okay. Do we have uh, more ideas and questions? What else do you, what else do we want to say here? Yeah. Someone? No. Um, yeah, uh, for for Monday, uh, uh, I would say almost right after this this session today, we're gonna send uh, you an email or about how we we would proceed and how we would challenge ourselves in the coming day um, uh, before the workshop and uh, uh, one more thing that I wanted to mention yes um, there are going to be a shared group between the participants in WhatsApp but for uh, everyone we are going to keep continue communicating with uh, with email Matthew, do you want to say something? Uh, yes, please. Yeah. Um, uh, I want. I was curious to see um, uh, how, because like, we like to focus on bottom up or, or or top down top down approaches when it comes to design. So in this case, I'm seeing that there's like this duality between what what we want, but also what we can achieve through what there is currently when it comes to fabrication techniques. So what I what wanted to ask. Like the, from someone from from the from the panel, was that is um, what usually determines kind of the outcome of a design? Does it usually come mostly from the fabrication techniques, or so obviously obviously when it comes to fabrication techniques, we need to implement um, a tool for every for every kind of process. So obviously it involves a lot of um, a lot of research and a lot of um, um, engineering for how to create this kind of production technique. So what I'm curious to see, like for example, in the um, examples you've shown, like what what was the priority at one point? Like did it come from the fabrication technique, or was it come, did it come from the idea? And then eventually you uh, you uh, break out the tools, kind of implement the ideas that you had, or was it just maybe like a mixture or like an iteration between the two, and kind of find a balance in between? I was just curious to see, like what usually is the, is if there is if there is a usual process. Or most curious to see, like, what was your process about it? Thank you. Anyone, uh, anyone reflect on that, or or anyone? Uh, yeah, I can. I mean, basically, when we were thinking about these four, I mean, we start to categorize this. I mean, we had a brainstorm session together. We also didn't have much of time. So we were thinking about how we can integrate two materials and we can thinking about, we were thinking about these types of hybridity uh, when we have two materials with these uh, dual extruders machines that we have. So it was, and after that, we were thinking about just samples, not applied on a body, not thinking about the cyborg and the design itself, but more thinking about the technical aspects and the possibilities that we have with this printer. So these four types that you're seeing, kind of, uh, is, it's kind of coming from the possibilities that we have and these hybrid methods that we were thinking about them. So it's not coming from the design as aspect. Wanted to keep those abstract in a way that you can apply uh, different uh, scenarios. For instance, now I'm I'm reading some of the some of the descriptions that you have provided for the workshop. Um, so, for instance, I see that Lorenzo is interested in in uh, being a. I mean, obviously, you're interested in product and footwear design, and uh, you think that like this uh, this workshop can help you to basically push this idea of hybridity uh, 
when it comes to footwear design. I think um, um, the fact that we are coming from different, uh, let's say, backgrounds definitely would help us to sort of uh, direct the, the design uh, to a certain extent. Uh, of course, when we uh, shape groups, there will be some sort of compromise, but at the same time, we can, we can benefit from the collaborating work. Uh, but, but back to your question about uh, within the combination of bottom up and top down. No. You know, your voice is really hard. Is it, is it the combination of bottom up or top down? Or um, is it mainly top down or bottom up? I think in, in, the, in the samples, uh, it was purely like uh, somehow formalization or verbalization of what we can achieve or what we can get uh, with hybridity. But when it comes to the design, I think this, these, these systems need to evolve. Even, even if, we, if we apply these, these, these geometric systems or topological systems on more complex geometries, again, this needs to evolve. And then when you, when you, when you apply it in, on, on, on more complex geometries, uh, or complex surfaces, complex, more complex volumes, then the, the, the factor of fabrication constraint and potentialities, which would act as a kind of an input to the design, then that, then that would be more, let's say, prominent and more prevailing, right? So for instance, um, if I share back, share back, <clears throat> um, uh, yeah, the, the screen, the, oh no, I think you, so for instance, uh, so, something might be obvious, but in this case, since our focus was this ability uh, of uh, material A on B, we we have simply, in a kind of a top-down way, so to say, have decided to to go for angles which are printable, right? So, if obviously, like the angles are ranging from 45 to to 60, if you go, you you know it by experience or like common sense that if you go more than 45. Uh, have a challenge. Uh, of course, you can, you can use uh, other techniques of printing, or you know, other techniques of printing might come to the other materials country. So, I think for the prototype, in order to get, I mean, um, since we are thinking of getting uh, shaping four groups, more or less, but uh, this also depends uh, on, on your research until uh, Monday and also. Uh, the time zones, etc., uh, so on and so forth. So, but we 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 are thinking three, of three or four four groups, right? And we expect like the prototypes of each groups to be producible and printable. But if these these constraints of forty five degree would stop us to to uh, answer the, the the concerns or challenges that we have in our, our design story or design ideas for the whole design of the. the this variable, we may skip this this constraint for for now, and then embed such such constraint or such intelligence only when it comes to to the prototype that we are developing, or or we sort of um, not necessarily rationalize, but some somehow inform the prototype uh, in a parallel way. Um, yeah. I'm, 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 I'm reading, uh, I'm reading your, let me, let me share back. Uh, I'm reading your, your descriptions about um, why you were interested in these workshops. Uh, I see that for instance, um, um, Huang from um, uh, Cornell uh, have been interested in, in the paper of us with uh, Yucho, <clears throat> uh, which we, we did on biostable materials. Uh, maybe, maybe, 
we have you. Yeah, you're, you're there. So maybe, maybe you can elaborate on, on why why you were interested in that, and then how do you see that this this workshop can basically because that 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 project was mainly based on auxetic materials, right? And relying on actually the fatigue. I mean, considering the fatigue of the material as a as a given uh, parameter. So maybe maybe you can elaborate a bit more on what you are thinking when you were referring to that project. Uh, so, and can you hear me now? Yeah, yeah. Uh, so for that project, and I was um, doing my research in Cornell and about authentic material. And the first, um, like my research focus is on the um, reconfiguration of material. So I was thinking a way to um, investigate the material system which can change its shape and morph according to different and um, certain and uh, like environment inputs. So that helped me to come to the idea of the oxidic system because it is a material system which can change its shape and um, according to different external forces. So and when I doing that and I see the papers you did and I find the system is very interesting since and um, it is a very like creative weight and um, linking between the flats and surfaces. So and um, so that is uh, like uh, relates to my current research, which is still ongoing, and that it's likely to. Uh, last for the whole year. And mm -hmm. in terms of these workshops, indeed, I have some questions. Um, so when I see the examples you provided, and I see that all the material systems are like pretty much focused more on a formal approach that embeds and integrate two different material system into a like some kind of formal language to make the two material system come together. And, but um, since they are all from 3D print part, and um, I was wondering if the two different material system has any tectonic connections between the two of them, because since I'm seeing all of them that are like 3D printed, and I think the integration are more on a formal language instead of a mechanical language. And uh, so is that the thinking? So and um, I'm curious that and um, since um, like our design approach is more on a uh, like a uh, kind of uh, approach to um, configure those forms, or do we consider any of the mechanical constraints that may be needed for large scale architecture output? Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. my question. Yeah. yeah, I think um, that's that's a very relevant question. I think we, we sort of try to um, address it in the challenge, but for instance, um, this idea of uh, mechanical transformation and reconfigurability, I think it's a very relevant actually, because when it, when it comes to performance, this performance can be visual, this performance can be functional, and can be, uh, can, can be about the interaction between the human and the material, Stuff. But when it comes to this, this mechanical performance, I think using like hybrid material systems, like for instance, actually, what, what we did uh, here uh, in this, uh, maybe maybe not everyone is in is uh, uh, in, um, no no about this project, but this project was about like uh, uh, introducing this by a stable joint where uh, with minimal minimum basically force, you can basically bring the joints in a closed or a kind of an open state. And then the idea was to, to basically uh, use this by stable um, systems to, to result, to, to basically get these reconfigurable surfaces, right? And then one of the discussions that we had, especially uh, like during developing this, this, this test with you, was the fact that can we, for instance, combine a, a Hybrid and uh, hybrid of soft and rigid material in this, these joints, because because uh, one of the questions when it comes to my stable system is is uh, the fatigue of the material. Right? 
So, and then if you could could benefit from a very performative humility, which obviously results into a certain, let's say, visual I think these these this sort of these sort of questions or ideas are exactly what we would expect you to, to sort of think of until Monday, and then when you learn learn a bit of, of the techniques. Uh, so where we take these 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 different systems in terms of like performance, and then how do we benefit from this ability is is something that we we can definitely go beyond the visual aspect and think about. Mechanical structural aspect of it. I think actually it would be really cool that if we could if we could integrate uh, such an idea for one of the designs, and uh, maybe we can also at one point uh, we can also ask you to to join um, if there is a reason uh, for that uh, in one of the design projects. Because uh, there will be final reviews with external members, but maybe during the workshop we can also benefit from the people that we know around us. And I think that would be quite good. Yeah. Okay. Maybe maybe uh, we continue with the. Um, we still have time, and I think this is good if we go through the other descriptions just to. Oops. Jump. Okay. Um, so, 3D printing. So you were interested in Houdini in general. I'm trying to to find find. Explanations and descriptions, which are a bit more. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, for instance, uh, Ahar is referring to. Uh, I mean, of course, programming language and agent based coding. But also idea of rule-based and physics-based simulation. So maybe 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 you can elaborate a bit more about her. what do you think? Uh, how how do you see it so far? I mean, I, I'm sure that at this short time you might not have crystal clear idea, but 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 maybe maybe you can reflect on, on what you. Um, thank you. Um, yeah. The main concern um, that I'm always um, trying to um, actually <laughs> focus on uh, the things that I do is uh, to actually find the uh, potential that I have to do with materials or anything that I have and, and then um, try to uh, experience uh, what I can do with it. So uh, the very um, thing that um, is very amazing to me uh, is the contrast between the uh, things that uh, you said, like softness and um, hardness, or um, in things I guess uh, they can um, they can um, bring uh, many potentials uh, to I don't know to um, design or or think uh, of how uh, I don't know many methods. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so, so you're interested in like how we can basically um, benefit from the feature of a uh, material which can be actually a hybrid system and then how we can design with, with those features. I think that's a that's a good direction to, to invest. Until, until, until. And I think uh, at first, mm -hmm. yeah, at first I think, um, I should um, know exactly uh, what uh, kind of uh, fabric or structure each of uh, the methods or anything that you uh, propose here um, have and then find the potentials and also um, find the contrast uh, I can use uh, and then find um, maybe uh, what, um, I mean, what can I do with it? 
maybe designing a bench or I don't know. I think I think uh, because because uh, in the in the challenge we want to you to think about the performance. I think the performance uh, when it comes to like computational design and uh, and, and field of architecture, which also somehow well addressed in in the comment by um, uh, should I call you Huang or Shen uh, Shang? Uh, you can call me Huang. Huang, okay. Uh, what, what was was in the comment uh, an idea by Quan, uh, Wang um, is the fact that like when it comes to performance in architecture in general, we can think of different ranges of performances. Some of the performances are very much qualitative. You know, like you cannot necessarily. I mean, you can you can for instance when it comes to the hardness and softness of a chair that you are sitting, you can you can. Um, design a test, so to say, to quantitatively measure the softness of a material system, right? But that quantitative measurement may not result necessarily to uh, basically a goal for that design. Yeah, yeah. This, this quantitative, um, uh, ex, uh, let's say, test would prove the, the actual performance of this, this hybrid of soft and hard. Therefore, this some 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 uh, somehow common sense. Sometimes common sense. Sometimes human intelligence, which is the uh, basically the intelligence of the designers. When it comes to these qualitative aspects, which also goes back to again what what Wang said, some of these are visual, but at the same time you can benefit from this visual with the way you apply them, and then result into some. Uh, get some sort of qualitative performance, like like this hardness and softness. Mm -hmm. But some of the some of the parameters, like um, the one that also I can call that is, which are mechanical, structural, or I don't know, like environmental, right? So if mm -hmm. if we if we say like if we go back to Newtonian, like Venustas, uh, Servitas, etc., right? So. And then we translate it into today's uh, language. We can say functional, structural, and environmental. I would say structural and environmental are usually more uh, measurable, right? While functional can be less measurable, or therefore, therefore we need to rely on common sense. We need to rely on human intelligence. We need to rely on prototyping a lot, learning from the prototype, and then and built on top of that. So I think maybe uh, if you could, uh, if you want to basically have a good conclusion also in this workshop, it would be nice to, to see the, the variety uh, of possibilities when it comes to addressing performance. So I think both, both extremes, qualitative and quantitative, or sometimes a combination of the two would be, would be interesting to explore. Yeah. Go ahead. Cool, super cool. Okay, let me. Mehnoush. Good name, Star Three. I just saw Salam just joined. Salam. Good Hello. morning. Good morning. Sorry for being late. There was a, a misunderstanding with the timing because it says 12 Greenwich time, which is 6 a.m. here. It's not 6 a.m. yet. I just happened to wake up before and okay. just cool. like a mistake. Sorry. So no problem. We have recorded this session hopefully yesterday. <laughs> okay, good. And then, then uh, I know you guys. Uh, we have two other members coming from US uh, and one from Brazil, I guess. I assume. Uh, and uh, you from Canada, I think uh, it's 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 hard, but we appreciate your 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 effort. Anyway, so yeah, everyone has uh, introduced uh, himself or herself. Maybe you can also introduce if you want. Sure. Um, hello, everyone. My name is Salam. I am a Palestinian Canadian and studying in Germany at the moment. Well, technically in Canada, right? With this situation. Uh, yeah, I'm continuing with my master's of architecture there. Cool. Very nice. 
material intelligence based on blah, blah, blah. Yeah, somehow also uh, similar to what maybe uh, Bahar was saying, but maybe Mahesh, you, you also want to add something. Praise Mahesh. Yeah. Um, so I'm sorry, I have no webcam, so. No problem. But yes, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, as I uh, described uh, myself, I um, have a bachelor degree in architecture, and now I'm uh, really interested in uh, digital uh, fabrication and design uh, because I don't have uh, much experience in uh, material. I uh, just work with uh, traditional material. Uh, I would interested to uh, extend my knowledge in this field. It is really new for me, and I need uh, to, I think, work hard to understand it better. Uh, yes, this. Thank you. Sounds good. Um, yeah, and I think uh, when we, uh, it, it doesn't matter, I think, to which extent you are skilled in, in, uh, in certain technique or certain field of computational design. I think, um, of course, the first part of the sessions, like Monday and Tuesday, it, it will be about like uh, building up some skills, but more than that, I think um, the design thinking and the, the, the design ideas that we put uh, during this week and then eventually materialize it, I think is, I would say, than, more important than the technicalities that we are going to face and learn. Uh, yeah, so maybe I just, I mean, we still have 10 minutes. So I, I'm enjoying this, this discussion. I don't know about you, but I think it's good to, to be a bit more aware of what we have said. Okay, Jamal, which really had difficult time to join in the morning, but I appreciate that you did at the end. So, Jamal. Uh, what, what is this, Edna? That's, that's interesting. You are, you're referring to, uh, Jamal, are you there still? I'm here, I'm very here. Ah, nice. Uh, I mean, uh, the description is really interesting. Well, maybe, maybe you can you, you can elaborate a bit, elaborate it a bit more. So um, I have a lot of vision, to say the least, um, which is why I do workshops like this and continue to learn tools like Grasshopper things on my own because um, I'm starting from a place of vision and trying to figure out a, a, a skill set to kind of work down to understanding the logistics about a fabrication and design. But essentially, I compare my mission or like what I want to do with the sort of skills I'm building through a fictional character called Edna Mode, who is fairly popular among um, the Incredibles, fr Incredibles franchise with Pixar. And so she's, she's basically the young, scrappy fashion designer who designs all the super suits for all the top superheroes in the movie. But like when you look at it in more, um, at least through my lens, we look at it more detailedly and you see her, her lab, you see the way she um, interacts with her clients. Um, she basically seems like she uses computation herself to devise these, these membrane structures that aids superheroes to um, exacerbate their natural abilities and to continue to elaborate up on, on those, but also to um, use this membrane to uh, as well deflect against any external harm they can face. And during these sort of tumultuous times and when there's a lot of uncertainty about the future, um, I, I hope to do the same thing with computation, understanding how to um, use computation to essentially design sort of wearable environments that protect us um, against external threats while also helping us to um, work and to live and thrive um, during these sort of un unhazy times or hazy times. Um, I think instead of superheroes, 
I, I want to design for the everyday person and instead of super villains, potentially climate change or a pandemic like the one that you're facing now. So yeah. Wonderful. I think I think the the um, yeah maybe 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 Benny you you say something. Yeah, a really, really interesting approach. Uh, like that idea, and um, it's great that you have a whole story and uh, passion. I really appreciate that. Yeah, I think uh, your your story took me took took me to a space which is very much hybrid, whether whether visual hybrid or structural hybrid. I think I think we're gonna have fun with uh, with with uh, the ideas that you brought up to the table, and uh, you're gonna bring. And uh, yeah, and uh, we appreciate that, that, as you said, you are very, very much present, although it's really early there, like uh, Salam and Wang. Yeah, I think uh, we, are, we are really looking forward to know more about Edna. Um, um, maybe um, so after this presentation, after this session, we're gonna share it. Uh, you a slide a template and maybe you just throw, throw your ideas there uh, until um, Sunday because what you were describing I think there is a lot of visual information behind this passion that uh, would be nice if you could share share those those visual images that you have or performative image ideas that you have behind your 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 line of thinking. Yeah, really cool. Thanks, Jamal. Um, I appreciate it, thank you. Yeah. So, Yuki, for me, find a venue, thinking of materiality coming. We are still living in physical material as long as. Mm -hmm. Domestic and global. Hmm. That's a nice one. Okay. Maybe maybe you can also elaborate a bit more, Yuki. What do you mean by domestic and global, or what what do you think in general? Um. Yes. The, because the what I said about domestic global is that, um, for example, if we use the uh, 3D printer. The maybe the, we can use the same materi material even if we are spreading uh, all over the world but i'm also interested in the, how to use domestic materials such as i don't know bamboo in asia or something stone in europe or etc so that's why i wrote the domestic to global and also the this workshop it will be a nice opportunity to share the uh, difference of material between the uh, everywhere in the world. Maybe the, we are coming from the um, different places. So mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. very nice. I think uh, as 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 you kind of see uh, uh, gradually this 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 um, because because this is. I mean, if, if, if you think of like uh, these four, four ideas as sort of material space, I think this, this combination of performance are, is, is already extending. We can think of structural versus, I don't know, like uh, pro, pro, protective material, or we can think of uh, like if, uh, or we can think of uh, domestic versus global, I, th I think, it would be it would be hard to immediately translate this idea of domestic to global into an hybrid material. I think it would be really abstract at this point. But I can think of like, for instance, a combination of a material which is low tech, therefore it is low resolution, with a material which is high tech, therefore it is high resolution. And then we can think of what we can call as material architecture or engineered material. The material which is like you know you know this notion of engineered material of course right or architecture material so 
So architectured materials are materials that are volumetric, and then we can think of the details of the material all the way to the scale of uh, micro to nano even. I mean, of course, now the focus of this workshop is to get speculated about it. So this high-tech material, which is, which is basically a global idea, because you can say science is global, uh, and, then, uh, and, then, and then a certain bamboo-based material, which is that thing, uh, a bamboo-based material or a material which is coming from Japan or somewhere else is still maybe 3D printable, but with another level of resolution. So I think this combination might also be designed for it. Very nice. We are almost there. Um, okay. Domestic. Or fair. Um, biological systems, interesting. Artificial to bio, oh, you're adding more actually. Before materials, yeah. Maybe, maybe you can you can also enlighten us a bit. Yeah, sure. Uh, I usually work with uh, cellular biological materials, mm -hmm. uh, and now I'm doing a research about how to incorporate biological organism to like normal daily life materiality. Mm -hmm. So uh, we are working in the lab and also in the studio. And I usually work more into materiality rather than morph or shape. That's why I'm very into like this kind of workshop where you can combine like the pure uh, materiality perform or performative into more like a complex shape. Yeah. Interesting. Really interesting. Any yeah, I think that's that's uh, that's really uh, it's really good good point. So um, it it kind of adds up to my research. So I think it will be interesting if we can elaborate on that as well. So um, yeah, I think that's good. Yeah, I mean I think this 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 hybridity can also be. Uh, I mean because like. We had this now domestic and global, and then we, we can say, okay, this is very like an uh, abstract idea, but then we can translate this domestic to global into something like a, a, a low tech versus high tech, right? So, so uh, of course, this again results into some sort of visual culture in terms of like materiality, but at, at the same time, can also result into some sort of performative, uh, let's say aspect that we can address but then when it comes to artificial and and bio maybe we can think of this this notion of time this this notion of basically uh, temporality versus uh, uh, something which is permanent right uh, tempor uh, temporality versus uh, something which is more like permanent if you if you think of biodegradable material combined with some sort of artificial material, which is has, a, has another level of, let's say, degra degradability. This can be also a good direction. But I think for, for Sunday, these are, these are the ideas or basically uh, concerns that you may think of. And uh, yeah, maybe share some, some, some slides or references or from your previous project or the current project that you explained. And then, then we can see how we can learn from it, extend it, and build on top of it with the prototype that we are going to have at the end of the workshop. Really good. Uh, okay, how far we are? Not, not, not that much. So let's 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 do this. I think it, it would help us later on. Global bio. Adorn, Adorn was not here, Morales, or was, was he, she, no, not here. Uh, Tatiana, okay, let's see, from Bartlett, Material Architecture Lab, I think that's also something that's sort of the address, that's nice. I see that like also in the work of Material Architecture Lab, there is a lot of like intertwine or this notion of assembly, maybe it's also, very much addressed there. Oh, 
creating a culture of waste. That's also interesting. Uh, yeah, maybe, maybe, maybe you can you can uh, enlighten us a bit, Tatiana. Hi. So, yeah, I did my master in the Barclays in the Material Architecture Lab, and there the focus is really on the material. So, I I worked with recycled plastic, with the, with a discrete component. And so after that, I, I started really researching about this way of thinking of the material. So I believe that we can use the materials in general in a better way because we are in the moment that we see it, not just like in the like really uh, ecological thinking, but also like in the construction, we are really used to just work in a way and project in design in a way that we just use the materials in the way that we want for a main shape. So I start to researching, uh, to do a research by myself or um, to check and see how we can use in a better way, in a more performative way, and that, that the materials are not, <laughs> so we don't have so much waste in general because mm -hmm. I think it is a better way of thinking of the future and how we're going to build mm -hmm. since we now we, we are in a crisis in a pandemic crisis but we also see that we have we have an ecological crisis coming and like we're already on it actually so and i think this ability can be as you said like if thinking in the way that the performance and how this material works can be one solution or at least mm -hmm. one path to rethink how we design. Exactly. I, think, I think the concern that you're addressing is really relevant and uh, important because like if you think of like the general footprint of uh, clothing and fashion industry is like really, really huge. Like it's, it's, it's enormous uh, because the amount of water that we use to, to, uh, to, to basically have this, this uh, cloth is like, it's really considerable. So, so this idea of uh, circularity and waste, I think this, this is a good, good, good uh, say, topic to invest and uh, maybe the, the material intelligence that we can basically um, design and uh, prototype and create eventually can, can, can uh, save a lot of resources, a, a lot of energy, so on and so forth, I think. Um, this this can be a good direction when we speculate about this variable. Yeah, and I also think, as you just said about the time and the, like the notion of time, it can be uh, interesting to speculate too. Mm -hmm. Since I think we we are used to to build or is where uh, in a way that is really for the moment, and maybe if it's something that it can be reusable or not just throw away, like just be wasted again. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And can, I think it's an interesting way of thinking. Mm -hmm. or, or maybe maybe also I, just a critical question. So maybe also the other way around. If, if you can produce products which do not cost any, any resources and you can throw away, maybe just critical thinking, just, just um, so we can even use more without harming, or maybe it's even good if you throw away your bike or your, your clothes, so you just throw them in the forest and it helps to, to, uh, to, to grow plants and everything. Could also be an idea. So, because uh, it's always critical this, this um, how we live and consume, um, but it's in the, in the end, it's because of using up resources and throwing away and producing waste. But that's, that's something, I'm, I'm not, I'm, I don't know the answer, um, but it's, it's like, um, it often pops up in my mind and uh, I think it's a very interesting topic, so. Yeah, um, yeah no, I, I think, I sorry, sorry. No, I didn't want to interrupt. <laughs> Please. Maybe Tatiana. I just, I just want to add that I think it's really interesting that what you just said. And, but I also think, again, that we need to rethink 
like if it is like the material or how or what we are designing again like if it is like if the waste is the the goal as you said and i totally agree would be an interesting way of thinking and then then the way you use it and the way we produce need to be different too so yeah i think it's an interesting thing of like I think that's again the time, like how the cycle works. It's not the waste, just like really as a waste that goes nowhere. So it has a purpose in a way. It's yeah, yeah, it should be called then differently. I mean, it was kind of provocative, of course, but. Um, yeah, but it's really interesting <laughs> what you said. Definitely, definitely. So yeah. maybe we need to, to somehow get rid of the word waste in our future society. Maybe that would be, yeah. uh, or, or the negative connotation of that word. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And maybe Lorenzo, you wanted to also add something. Uh, yeah, because uh, for example, uh, this discussion uh, put in mind that, for example, in foot in footwear, there is a huge discussion about, uh, uh, and in general, in production, to shift uh, from selling a product to selling a service. No. So the idea, for example, to uh, don't buy a shoes, but buy a service to have a shoes for a certain amount of here and then return it back this product uh, for let be dismantled in the right way. For example, for footwear, this is uh, uh, interesting because it's a very complex object with a lot of material and everyone uh, to be processed have to be in uh, the right channel. So, um, if we can think a solution, for example, for uh, biodegradable material and uh, permanent material, so where we can apply one and the other and think to having some part of the shoe that just, for example, uh, dismantle and disappear in a more normal, uh, in, in a fast way, and then you send it back, for example, the rest, I think could be a, an interesting, uh, way of thinking also for other products. Yeah, that, that, I mean, both, both of the ideas, I think, I mean, at least trigger, trigger this in my mind at times. What if, what if, you, if I, I mean, obviously when you are a kid, uh, I mean, let's, let's focus on the food. I mean, when you're a kid, I mean, the, you have to change your shoes more often because uh, uh, one year you have this size, the other year is like double, right? But then when you're uh, grown up, I mean, you end up having like a 45 or 40 years, right? So, so what, if, what if, if, if instead of buying like shoes every time, you, if you buy a skeleton of a shoes, which is material A, and the material B is customizing it for different needs, for different purposes. I think that that can be a very a speculative approach, which sort of justify this idea of hybridity on one hand, but on the other hand also, we would benefit from the different features of different materials. One is more permanent, one is more temporary, and then this combination of tempor tem temporality and permanence, permanency, I think this, this, this can be really an interesting idea to investigate. Because also it, re it may result into a certain level of uh, individualization or mass custom I mean, customization of the product. And I think that, that can be a very so, so one one part of the the shoe uh, that you buy for your life will dissolve in forty years, but the, the other part will dissolve every every two years. I mean, I'm just 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 speculating. That can be really interesting. Okay, so maybe maybe um, I mean I, I think we are missing the, the kind of some words uh, from Salam and uh, and. Uh, well, Salam and Igor, maybe you also shortly introduce. Uh, Salam and Igor are also part of a, a, a project that we are doing in Laos in Bissau, which is kind of called Pandemic Culture. So I think this workshop, this, this workshop they are part of the Pandemic Variable Architecture project. I, I, I think I, I, I try to manage to find a better microphone. For, for Monday. Um, I sent an email with an Amazon link. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, maybe, maybe you can explain it yourself. 
Sure. Um, so yeah, I uh, was introduced to uh, all this field of uh, robotics architecture and new materials by actually Sina, because uh, he, he's been my master last semester and now we're continuing with him working on uh, pandemic wearable architecture. And uh, in my design, I am trying to have a hybrid situation where I mix two different materials that transition between um, like uh, translucent material to transparent material. And um, this workshop um, sounds really interesting in terms of how to do that and uh, uh, how to combine materials. And also I think hearing you all it sounds really interesting that you're all from different backgrounds and with different uh, ideas. So it will really help me uh, to develop my knowledge about the different fields as well. So I like to learn from others and uh, this workshop sounds really interesting in that term. And uh, yeah, looking forward to what's coming. Nice. And Igor, maybe. Yeah, hello. I'm studying there too. And uh, my research is uh, about combining artificial and natural. And I want to go from one state to another. In connection with the coronavirus, I would like to make something like a mask that will contain the algae, uh, which will purify the air. I've already started my research uh, with the CNN and Abib. And I hope this workshop will help me to promote this idea or connect with the ideas of uh, you guys, I don't know. So, thank you. Nice. Okay, I, uh, I see that like, I mean, uh, we still didn't hear from Vahid and I mean, Vahid was uh, concerned about like um, the workshop time and who else is missing? Maybe, maybe whoever is missing ideas and reason maybe uh, from the participant maybe can can jump in and say something and then we, we close this session so Fahid you wanna you wanna add something or uh, the only thing that I should mention is that I'm uh, very interested in the narrative that you're going to find for the form or uh, the uh, the material the way that you're going to use the material the, the vision that we have uh, for me. Uh, one of the things that I was really interested in was Benjamin project about uh, oil camps. I mean, I, I read it before. The very thing that was interested uh, for me about it was uh, his vision and how he saw and how those spaces would get abandoned, but he also had this de democratic Your voice disappeared, right? Yeah, we lost your voice. Okay. Okay. Maybe you can type a div in the group in the chat of the Zoom that we have lost his voice and then we continue to closing this session. I don't know if he is hearing us or not, but anyway, I think what, what he's referring to is the project of Benjamin is also relevant. So I want this idea of artificial and natural. Um, maybe you can later add some ideas and comment, uh, Benny, but I think for now, we are sort of uh, good to wrap up this session. I would also like to thank all the auditing participants for listening and joining the session. Um, our idea is that also maybe uh, we would, uh, you are also welcome to join sessions and uh, some other sessions uh, maybe uh, we also orchestrate it in such a way that your presence can also be a bit more interactive maybe use your ideas or comment as a critique to other uh, works that we are going to develop later on uh, in order to baby basically make it more interactive and share share ideas and uh, uh, basically sort of visions and skills that we have um i think that's it for now um so we can uh, say goodbye uh, and then uh, start our first session on uh, tut tutorials and 
computational design modeling uh, on, on Monday. As we said, you're going to receive uh, everyone with participant and auditing will going to receive uh, an email about the next stages. But uh, with participants, we would like to uh, have a WhatsApp group um, where we can communicate uh, basically faster. Uh, and uh, yeah, that's it for now. Anything else, Benny and Dan and Arisa? No, I'm, I'm just really looking forward. Um, I think yeah. it's a great, a great combination of people and minds, and uh, I'm really looking forward. It's gonna be gonna be some work, but uh, I think we're all looking forward to it. So it's, yeah, I think the, the 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 results could be very very interesting. Yeah, yeah, I'm looking forward to. I guess. Okay. Cool. Thank you, guys. Uh, have a nice uh, weekend. Uh, thank you for all right. Bye. Thank you, Professor.